Kia ora, good evening. 2012 was a tough year for New Zealand cricket. Poor performance and off-field mismanagement attracted a barrage of criticism from fans and media alike. It appeared to be a game in crisis. The Black Caps, a team in disarray. But with the side posting its first ever one-day series win in South Africa and buoyed by recent successes against England, the second-ranked team in the world, is the news all bad? In tonight's exclusive report, Jeremy Wells talks to those closest to the team, fans, management, players, past and present, to look at the state of the game. And he sits down with Captain Brendan McCullum in search of the answers. If you look back over New Zealand's cricket history, we've never really set the world on fire. We've produced the odd great player. There's been a smattering of memorable moments and occasionally we've been regarded as innovators. Our national summer sport has always toiled into the breeze, while its opening partner rugby tears downwind. Nevertheless, cricket has always had its place. But while the sixes have increased and the bowling's got faster, the crowds have become less crowded. And then last year, New Zealand cricket presided over what the media have described as New Zealand's worst sporting PR disaster. For many, the sinking ship had finally hit the iceberg. And for some, it was the natural progression of an underperforming team. To others, it was nothing less than a cricketing coup. A shambolic week for New Zealand cricket today culminated with the worst case scenario. Ross Taylor made himself unavailable to tour South Africa after being effectively sacked as captain. Therefore, Brendan McCallum has been appointed as Black Caps captain all three forms of the game. Here's the story. In a Sri Lankan hotel room leading up to the final test, New Zealand cricket coach Mike Hessen told Ross Taylor he wasn't happy with his performance. And on their return home, he'd be recommending a change of captaincy to the CEO and board. Unfortunately for Hessen, Ross Taylor then went on to score a match-winning century to draw the series. Taylor's heroic innings left New Zealand cricket scrambling to justify their decision. In terms of um, our recent one-day results, we've won five of our last 30 one-day internationals against top eight sides. We're now ranked number nine in the world in one-day cricket. We're ranked number eight in T20 cricket. Um, it would be remiss of me not to acknowledge that something we're doing is not right. While few argued with New Zealand cricket's right to change captains, fans of Ross Taylor felt the timing had been poor and Taylor himself was left feeling betrayed. Cricket dominated water coolers nationwide. Calls went out for heads to roll. And our best batsman, Ross Taylor, decided to make himself unavailable for the upcoming tour to South Africa. Were you surprised at the public reaction to the captaincy change? I think it was, there, there was significant reaction, and I think the time of the year as well you know, it helped that. It was just before Christmas, there was no other sport going on, rugby wasn't on at the time, so, so there wasn't a lot going on really, so it did capture the, uh, the media's attention. I mean, I think w everyone would, have, would say it was a, a disaster, <laughs> so, you know, I think if everyone had to go at it again, they'd handle it differently. Um, you know, Ross, Brendan, management, coach, everyone I think would handle it, it slightly differently. What would you do differently if you could do it again? I think, uh, you know, we supported uh, Mike Hesson's recommendation and uh, believe that is still the, the right recommendation. And that was initially to uh, appoint Brendan McCullum as the short form captain and Ross Taylor as the test captain. Uh, 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 Ross Taylor declined that. Uh, but in terms of communi communication, it's well documented now, and, and I think Mike Hesson is the first to agree that the, cu the communication could have been more concise and the timing could have been a little bit better as well. While New Zealand cricket apologised for the incident, the negative perception of the organisation continued, both online and on talkback. Chaos, a shambles, and it has been a distraction to say the least. And there are elements of it where people have been badly hurt. Ross Taylor and his family put them at the top of the list, a number of others as well. According to many commentators, cricket was a game in crisis. Um, obviously it's, it's reached some low points um, and it has over the years from time to time. 
at the moment. I think it's been recognised that certain things have occurred which shouldn't have occurred through a lack of process and so on. So I think that's probably fair comment. I mean, there's been a catalogue of disasters, though, so uh, in, in some senses it's sort of par for the course, but that was a really, really bad one. To, I mean, at the end of the day, not only did we um, get a new captain and have all of that stuff going on, but when your best players aren't in the 11 because they don't want to be in your team because you've hacked them off so much, that is a complete and utter shambles. Where do you think that this negative perception comes from? Uh, I think uh, it's quite interesting. I've been in the job 12 months, and, and one of the things that's really surprised me is the uh, negativity from former players in particular and I think it goes back to the formation of the Players Association uh, when there was a disconnect and I think that there's still a lot of baggage here to be quite honest uh, but, but in defence of, of former players I don't think that New Zealand cricket, I don't think that we have provided a vehicle for players to, to communicate or share their views and thoughts on the game. There's one past player you won't hear publicly bagging the current team. And that's former medium pace bowler, now corporate cab owner operator, Ewan Chatfield. It did go on when I was playing, and I hated it. <laughs> um, and that's why now you don't ever see me quoting in any <laughs> sort of media criticising the current players. I just, I just will not do that. The 9i Express was a pivotal part of the famous 1980s team, a team which represents to many the golden era of cricket in New Zealand. Marvellous catch by Ian Smith. Big crowds, people smoking ciggies all over the place. You had ciggies in the drink trolleys in those days, didn't you? Oh, not quite, not quite, but there were cigarettes in the dressing room, yes, and, and, and uh, beer in the dressing room. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm proud of having played in the 80s. And Ewan Chatfield has taken the catch, a brilliant catch at fine leg. He's not noted for his fielding, but uh, he just... Well, I mean, we've had as good a teams and not better teams since uh, result-wise. I mean, the team of the uh, middle 90s and the early 2000s, I, I think we've probably uh, had more res better results than, than we did. Like today, the so-called golden era had its fair share of conflict too. Captain Jeremy Coney and opening bowler Sir Richard Hadley's relationship was famously frosty. By 1986, they weren't talking, preferring to communicate on the field via an intermediary. You know, I played in lots of cricket teams where there's a few players in, in the team that don't actually uh, like each other that very much, but you've got a job to do. And once you go over that line out to the middle, everything changes. The person that you like least, if he does something which helps you win that game, your mates. And that's the way it should be. Are you optimistic about the state of New Zealand cricket? I'm optimistic about uh, cricket. I've been uh, involved in it for so long. It's a, an interesting subject. I find it fascinating and, and I don't give in easily. And I'm hoping for a day when, when open discussion is encouraged and people are prepared to sit around a table and debate things rather than protecting positions. And, and I'm hopeful that we're getting closer to that happening. And at Anderson Park in Wellington, where cricket tragics the Beige Brigade are playing the Barmy Army, gentle optimism is also in the air. Do you think New Zealand cricket is in good shape? I think it's on the up, but geez, they've set the bar pretty low. So I, I think um, they've got a lot of a lot, they've got a long way to go. With Brendan in charge, um, I think that that will be great for the team. I think he's he's a very charismatic character. He really cares, and I think he'll score a lot of runs, which is, at the end of the day is what he's going to be judged on. So, yeah, I'm, I am optimistic. I think that we've got a, a good a good side, and we're going to perform very well in the future. I'm also optimistic about the passion for cricket in New Zealand. Hopefully now, um, we've got to a point where all of that bad blood has come to a boil, and we've and we can move forward because. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter who's captain. I, I really believe that. You can't, one captain doesn't win, it, win new games. You know, it's about a group of leaders within the, in the side. And with the amount of cricket these guys are playing these days, it's not going to be one captain. Up next on 60 Minutes, Black Caps new captain, Brendan McCullum, fronts up and answers his critics. Here's some words that, that callers have used to describe you. Greedy. Greedy, OK. Greedy. Um, arrogant, selfish, tattooed upstart, which I thought was quite an interesting one. <laughs> Br 
Brendan Barry McCallum is one of the most exciting players to have ever represented New Zealand. Dropped into international cricket at the tender age of 20, he's filled roles inside the team as an opener, in the middle order, as a number three batsman, a wicket keeper, vice captain, and now the 31 year old father of two has been handed the captaincy in one of the most tumultuous periods in New Zealand cricket history. There he goes, falling straight. McCullum has got all of it, you betcha. Tell me what it's like to go out to bat in an international. What's going through your mind when you walk out onto the park? Uh, well, different things at different times. Um, sometimes there's obviously a bit of apprehension and I guess a bit of uncertainty as well. Um, I guess the, well, right through my career as well, I've always, always seen it as opportunities too. And so I think, especially I guess now in the latter part of your career, you've built up that experience. and. And now you see every uh, every time you walk out to bat as an opportunity to, to I guess, perform for your team. The latter part of your career, are you referring to this part of your career as the latter <laughs> part of your career? Yeah, well, I'm getting a bit old these days. Um, yeah, I guess 31, so I've probably got you know four or five years left in the game. Um, it's been obviously a pretty good ride so far, um, but yeah, definitely entering the latter stages of my career. Are you ever afraid underneath that helmet? You can't think, yeah, you certainly can't think like that. There's been times where I've sort of thought, I'll spit my chewing gum out here just in case I choke on it. Um, but, but no, namely, no, I guess mainly you just go out there and you sort of, you've trained, you've trained for those circumstances, you've trained for those conditions, and whilst there's times where you're not sure you've quite um, equipped to deal with them, um, you still, I guess you find a way. No matter how many short deliveries the team were peppered with in the nets, Nothing could have prepared them for the barrage of media bounces regarding the captaincy change late last year. What was your initial reaction when you were asked to become captain? Uh, was that it there, right there, was it? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Was that a tricky time to take over the captaincy? I mean, a lot of people would say, McCullum's crazy for taking the captaincy at this time, I mean, it's nuts. Yeah, some of my closest friends said that too. Was that a strange experience for you? Sort of be pitted off against a mate almost. Did that create problems, do you think? Our friendship hasn't changed. Um, I think people have a misconception of that. Um, and I guess there's some people who in and around the scenes have probably probed um, you know, that a little bit harder than what should have been, should have been done. But our relationship's fine, and since Ross has come back into the team as well, and we've got on well. And that's something that we'll continue to do so because we're both professionals, we're both people that care about this team. And we've shared a lot of good experiences on and off the field over the years and we'll continue to do so as we, as we keep representing New Zealand. I believe you are a star. It's fair to say that the recent change in cricket's balance of power toward the subcontinent nations has been very kind to Brendan McCallum. Currently ranked the number one T20 batsman in the world, his cricketing services fetched 900,000 US dollars in last year's IPL auction. Is it strange watching yourself get auctioned off like a horse? Yeah, it is. People bidding for you? Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, it definitely is. It's, uh, it's, a bizarre, it's a bizarre situation. You don't know, there's no real rhyme or reason for it either. The values that people go for, um, you know, some people sold cheap and some some are sold high, it's just how it is, and as I say, it's an accepted part of international cricket now, so. But look, it's not, the IPL's, the IPL's great, but it's, it's not the number one driving force for, for, certainly for me, and I know for everyone else within our team as well. But with big bucks comes big scrutiny. And when the team's not performing, talk back and Twitter a chocker full of knockers. Look, mate, I'm completely absolutely disgusted in our team's performance. I don't understand how these jokers think they can get away with getting paid all the money they do. This captain of ours, he needs to spend a little bit more time in the net instead of hanging around a bloody tattoo parlour. Look, I'm actually so disgusted, I can't even talk about it anymore. McCullough, the captain for New Zealand, is gone. Here's some words that, that callers have used to describe you. Greedy. Greedy. Okay. Greedy. Um, arrogant, selfish, tattooed upstart, which I thought was quite <laughs> an interesting one, which um, 
I mean, when you were getting tattoos, for example, were you ever thinking that maybe you may have been criticised for that? No, it didn't really cross my mind at that stage. Um, but I guess, uh, again, uh, there are things which you can't control. Not everyone's going to... Not everyone's going to like you or not everyone's going to um, like what you do or, or how you present yourself. And um, you know, there's many people out there as well who who love this team and, and I guess love what you do as well. And it's sort of, you ju I, guess I go home every night knowing that trying to um, uphold the, the things that are important to me and important to my family and important to the teams that I play in as well. And um, if I keep doing that, then, then hopefully uh, the balance of people who enjoy what you do versus those that, that despise what you do um, will we'll work out in the positive.